On the 28th of May, 2010, a group of Buddhist and Christian pilgrims visited the island called Skellig Michael for a ceremony of hospitality between the two wisdom traditions. Skellig Michael was settled by Irish monks in the 6th century and became a place of monastic contemplation, learning and pilgrimage for the best part of a thousand years. The Skellig Rock is located nine miles off the south coast of Ireland at one of the most westerly points of Europe. Skellig Michael, known as Skellig Vihil in Irish, was called after Michael the Archangel, a figure who represented the experience of being at a threshold between different worlds, between life and death, between known and unknown, between this earth and the beyond. Skellig Michael was one of a series of monastic settlements located at what was then considered to be the edge of the world. On the morning of May 28th, Buddhist pilgrims set out from the Cork mainland. They sailed eight miles of sea to Skellig Michael, where they would take part in the guest book project of hospitality between religions. Arriving on the island, the leader of the Buddhist pilgrims, Tsigar Kongchul Rinpoche, a reincarnate Tibetan Buddhist Lama, and one of the most illustrious Lamas of recent history, was met by representatives of the Irish monastic tradition. Irish theologian and singer Nori Nirian, Benedictine monk Gregory Collins, and Richard Carney, philosopher and director of the Guestbook Project, received Tsigar Kongchul Rinpoche as guest of their Christian wisdom tradition. They exchanged gifts involving the bestowing of kataks, Tibetan blessing scarves, and the presentation of a book of icons to Tsigar Kongchul by Father Gregory. The blessings of welcome were delivered in Gaelic, Greek, and Latin, the three languages known to the monks who first settled in the Skelligs in 588 AD. Buddhist and Christian pilgrims ascended the 618 steps to the monastic enclosure. Six stone beehive huts, two oratories, and an enclosed vegetable garden. The monks lived here for centuries in very austere conditions, with nourishment gathered from their local environment. Vegetables, birds, eggs, fish. Since there was no natural spring on the island, Rainwater was captured in a cistern fed by grooves in the rocks. Bread was delivered from the mainland when weather permitted for the celebration of the Eucharist. In front of the sixth century oratory, Rinpoche spoke to those present. Zigar Kongchul spoke of the Skellig Monastery as a place of pilgrimage and said that in coming to the island, we can fully appreciate that kind of human spirit. Outside the small oratory, the ceremony of hospitality took place. Christian hosts from Glenstall Abbey and the guest book project exchanged a blessing with Rinpoche. Sail, 
The following day, May 29th, the guestbook project of hospitality continued in the Buddhist center of Dzogchen Bera. Zigar Kongchul and members of the Buddhist community now became hosts in their turn, welcoming their Christian counterparts to the center. By people who have done things like this in the past, like a skeleton is a great example. For 600 years of time, many great monks who have lived there in that situation, in that minimum facilities for human beings to live and survive <clears throat> for higher purpose, for higher cause, and have definitely had a great, great results. I'm sure many saints have came from there. And it is a great experience for us to now even after so many years, so many centuries, when we go and visit, has the power to inspire us. So we're delighted to have Zigger Control return to, to Zogchenbera again. Um, he's been here now four times at the invitation of Sylvia Rinpoche. They have a very special connection because they're within the same tradition and they also um, share the same masters. I mean, of course, we're, we're here in Ireland, um, a Catholic country, and so most of the people here who come to Zogchenbera would be not Buddhist and most would be Catholic. And I think what they find is that it awakens or refreshes this, this spirituality within them and they go back to their own tradition, um, inspired, actually, more inspired. So this centre here in Beira, uh, at the very heartland of sort of traditional Irish Catholic Gaelic culture, is, um, is the epitome, in a sense, of Buddhists coming here as guests of the nation and then becoming in turn hosts for native people, the Irish themselves, coming here as Irish, as Christian. In the spiritual care centre, which welcomes those with severe and terminal illness from different faith traditions, Christians and Buddhists met in the meditation and prayer room. The Dechen Shying Spiritual Care Centre is a place of hospitality for the terminally ill, based on the teachings of the centre's founder, Sogyal Rinpoche, author of the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. Well, spiritual care is very much about how you are, not what you say or do. And it's about really being present with people in the face of suffering, uh, with the compassionate presence. And I think to be able to do that really requires that we look at our own fears as caregivers, our own fears around death and dying, uh, around illness, and also that we have a sense of our own spirituality as well, so that we can really have the confidence to be with another person who's going through suffering. So many times I've been here for many years, and I just pe see people come, and they just come alive here, actually. And it's the physical environment, does it? But it's also something about what is here, actually, what has been brought over from Tibet. It's a living tradition that actually people can feel it touches them, they can relate to it, and they can apply it in their lives. And when they're here, whether they're sitting outside looking at the view, or they're sitting in listening to teachings or practicing, you can just see they're connecting with something very deep within themselves, actually. And... Um, yeah, that's, for me, that's what Suction Bear is, actually. It's a place for people to really come back home. And so many people, when they do come here, they say, it's like coming home. It's like this is their spiritual home. There's a worldwide dialogue going on between the Christian traditions and Buddhism and Hinduism in particular. So this is a small part, but it's the small parts that actually make the big thing work. It's the little stones that make the mosaic. And for me, this was a very important and precious stone. 
Uh, firstly, I'm deeply moved by the guest book project, the idea of hospitality as the hinge that links and joins all world wisdom traditions. It's a profound, beautiful uh, idea, and it, it needs to be sung. Dr. Berry is extremely important in Ireland at this time. Um, and of course it has been a pioneer in the whole Buddhist thing in Ireland. And again you have to do make a pilgrimage to come here and make a very definite decision to come here. And I think that's the essence of a sacred space, indeed like Glenstall Abbey. Um, that you just don't happen on it. You've got to make a very conscious decision in yourself. I want to do this. I want to bring myself into the presence of the divine, whatever you call that divine, and it doesn't matter. In all traditions, as the Zen saying says, listen to the breath of God, listen to Muhammad, listen to Buddha, listen to Jesus, but don't get caught up in the names. Listen beyond the names, listen to the breath of God. I think that's the guestbook project, is all about listening to the breath of God, and it's doing it very successfully. Oh,